My name is Laura Lippman. I have been participating in Tennessee Williams Festival off and on since 2005. It's really funny to me because now all my writer friends are always like, you know, well, how do you get to do that? And how can you hook me up? I'm like, I'll tell you how. But yeah, it's a great festival. It's one of my favorites. I'm so in love with New Orleans. You know, I grew up in Baltimore. My career has been somewhat centered on knowing Baltimore and being based in Baltimore. And I joke that you know, in coming to New Orleans in midlife, I feel like someone who is this long, happily married woman, and now I'm in a triangle. I'm in a terrible triangle. I'm so in love with New Orleans, and this is not the only freeway. I know. It's um, I love everything about it. It's you know, most places if you've known them as a tourist and you come and live there there's a falling off. It's like, oh, it was so much fun when I was a tourist, but now there's real life, and I have to go pick up the dry cleaning, and I have to deal with all of these quotidian things that are irksome. I had, I liked New Orleans as a tourist, but I love it as a resident. New Orleans is one of the more literary places I've ever visited or lived, where when you go around, if you really pay attention, as I do, to what kind of paperbacks people are reading, you see people reading all the time in New Orleans on their porches, sitting in coffee shops. And they're usually reading pretty interesting and unusual and erudite things. It is a pretty literary city. Um, it's okay, Kim Novak. I am still, I'm still getting people talking to me about this. It now seems to have taken on a second life, which has nothing to do with me, and it gets crazier and crazier. Mardi Gras day, cold, rainy. I have a three and a half year old daughter. She woke up with a sniffle. I probably would have been out there if it had not been irresponsible for me as a parent. I was like, I can't do this to this kid. She just wasn't up for it. And it wasn't like she was clamoring to go out. She felt crummy. So I had actually gotten up and I had Whole outfit on and all my makeup on and just a bunch of stuff in my costume box and I had on green eyelashes and I took a photograph, I took a selfie for just like a few friends that I do this for and um, then at six o'clock I, you know, cold creamed off all the makeup. My daughter had fallen asleep because she was so under the weather and I had time to just like sit around and be, it's like Christmas day when you're Jewish. There's nothing to do. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and so I was reading the internet, and I had not even watched the Oscars. And yet, you know, these days through social media, you can experience something without even seeing it. And I knew about Kim Novak. I found a very interesting piece that someone had written that sort of explained her relationship with Harry Cohn when she was a young and gorgeous woman. And I looked at a photograph of her as she appeared at the Oscars, and I just thought, well, it's so unfair because she couldn't win. She could have shown up looking every inch the 81-year-old woman she is, or she, and she would have been criticized for that, and people would have been sort of sorrowful, like, oh, remember how gorgeous she was, or she could do what she did, which is go out and get some new plastic surgery, fillers, whatever she did, and then she was criticized for that. And like, that sucks. And like, it's crazy because the fact of the matter is there are all these people who do get good plastic surgery and they lie about it. And so all we do is talk about people with bad plastic surgery. And we're not, we're not being realistic about what people look like. So I took a photograph of my very naked, and it's not like I go around decked out in makeup anyway, but it was not the most flattering photograph of myself, but it was what I looked like. And I just put it up on Facebook and Twitter. And I created the hashtag, it's okay, Kim Novak, and we lost count into the thousands. And, and, and people said, oh, Laura Levin challenged writers to do this. Like, no, people, not just writers. Although I think writers were funny because we had such contrast with our author photos. About that. <laughs> and I was, really, I was really moved by it. I, I mean, people went whole hog, too. I, you know, they were not, no one tried to cheat it. As a matter of fact, I recently saw a friend in New York 
who she, she, she did put up one of the photos and she said, I'm going to show you this other photo I shot that I didn't use because the lighting was weird and it looked like I had lip gloss on it. I didn't want people to think that I was cheating. So I thought that was very funny. But it was, it was nice. It was, it was very positive. Monaghan's back in 2015. Uh, you know, I was so clever. I gave her a baby, and then I could figure out how to write a book about her with her baby. And this would sort of be in the category of writing advice I might give to my students. When you have a problem in your work, sometimes the solution is to go right at it. And so it's like the kid was the problem. So it's like I need to write a book about the kid. Not so much a book about her kid, but um, a book in which the whole idea of motherhood is at the heart of the book. And and that's what I did. So that book should be out in the winter of 2015. Still no title.